Have you ever wondered about Anderson power pole connectors? I mean, they seem to be all the rage. What are they? Why are they so important? And how does it work? And they claim that their connectors are genderless, that there's no male, no female, no jack, no plug. It's just they all mate together. How can that be possible? I have answers. Welcome to Ask Dave, episode 44. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio operator KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode 44, and today we'll talk a little bit about Anderson power pole connectors. Anderson power pole connectors look sort of like this. This is a power supply from PowerWorks, okay? A company that's been really pushing the Anderson power pole connectors for a long time. These are the connectors right here, okay? And you take a connector, like this one right here and it just inserts right there okay very easy very quick uh, they'll handle 30 to 45 amps in other words everything that you need for a normal hf uh, power supply how can these connectors be genderless what does that actually mean well in most cases like think of a, a typical wall plug going into the outlet uh, the plug has the prongs uh, and the outlet has something for them to go into. An outlet can't mate with an outlet and the prongs can't mate with the prongs. But this is a case where we have truly genderless uh, configuration where any Anderson power pole connector of the right size will mate with any other of the right size. And I'd like to show you just a little bit about how and why we do that in amateur radio. It's become very, very popular. If you put Anderson power pole connectors on your radio's power leads, uh, you'll find that you can plug them in just about anywhere else because so many amateur radio operators use them. Let's uh, take a look and see how they can be genderless. I've got some bits and pieces here for the Anderson power pole connectors. Um, the way they work fundamentally inside is that you've got these little things that are crimped onto the end of the wire. Okay. Um, they're just little things right there. When they come in, the connector, like this, see they meet like this, and then are like that together, pinned together, okay? So they just come in and pin together. Now let's see how that's done. In the housing, this is the housing, or hood, for the uh, connector. Uh, the connector comes in through this way and the connector shows up down over here okay so we see that the uh, actual conductor is the one on the bottom all right now if we take another one of these right here like this okay you would think well they're two of the same kind and they are they're identical these are identical units but note that if you put the uh, conducting part on the bottom on this one, the conducting part on this one on the top, that these two connectors will mate together. See? Just like that. They mate together. All right. There is no gender involved. You can connect any one of the power pole connectors to uh, any other. Another unique feature of these is that they can slide onto each other and we see right here we've got a little place to slide over here is a place that will receive a slider on two sides so we'll take this and we'll just put uh, this black one with the slot right there we'll pick the one like that push them together and voila you've got a connector that uh, connects together and they're the same distance apart all the time uh, you can take them apart rearrange them if you happen to do them uh, incorrectly so what I'm going to show now is the amateur radio standard for the connectors. This is an extension cord that I made for 12 volts. Okay, these are most normally used at 12 volts in amateur radio. Now the Anderson power pole connectors are made in a wide variety of sizes, but in amateur radio we use these. Okay, and this extension cord will connect back on itself, okay? Um, just as was shown uh, earlier, here you see in the, this is the uh, amateur standard configuration for these. When you look at the conductor part, it's on the bottom, it's on the bottom. 
think that um, red to black, positive to negative, okay, a, a good way of thinking that is be positive, not negative, okay, so that this is the one that goes on the left. Now, if we look at how these go into a power supply like this, so this is the power supply, and we just plug it in. That's all there is to it. And when we want to disconnect it, pull on the plug, not the cord. We disconnect it. It's very easy to connect, disconnect things. Uh, and if everybody's using power pole connectors, it just really makes it a lot easier. Now, most power supplies come with these binding posts. And you have to kind of lift them up like this. Okay. And uh, then uh, your wire, bare wire, comes in like this and connects here. And you screw that down and screw this one down. And uh, lo and behold, you've got your wire connected there. And uh, almost all power supplies will have these connectors on there. Note this little silver band around the uh, plus connector that is <laughs> conducting so if you drop something in between here you can short the supply out a good supply is protected against that sort of thing this by the way is a nice little power supply that's been out on the market for a long time from powerworks um, and it's a switching power supply it's 25 amps actually it'll go up to 30 in peak and it's perfectly capable of powering a modern hf uh, 100 watt radio Okay, how are these power pole connectors put on? Uh, this is one of the things, uh, uh, you know, you can buy, you can buy this kind of thing where the connectors are already mounted on cables and stuff like that, and, and you'll have to pay for that. The cost is in the connectors and in the mounting, not in the wires so much. So you'll find that a five foot cable will cost not much more than a three foot cable. Um, I prefer to purchase um, wire in bulk. This happens to be 12 gauge uh, stranded wire. That's really important if you're going to deal with wire that it be stranded. It's just so much easier to deal with. Plus, if you flex it a little bit, it won't break. This particular wire comes from a company called uh, bulkwire.com, something that you can buy. Oh, I'm sorry, 14 gauge and 100 feet and uh, red black zip cord is what they call it there and i bought a hundred feet of it i've used a lot of it okay so what we're going to do is put this thing together now there's a, a company out there um, called qs radio and they put together a bunch of uh, kits and things for putting coaxial connectors on the end of coax uh, cables. And they do it all with crimping. And this is the kit that has the tools uh, for the crimping. And you open it up here, and you've got uh, all kinds of things. This is the crimper set that came out of it. You've got kinds of tools here for dealing with the different sizes of coax. But what's interesting is that this thing comes with several different uh, jaws for the uh, gripper. And the one that I've got on here right now is the one to use for Anderson power pole connectors. So with this great big uh, crimper here, we'll uh, go through this and take a look. Okay, what we're going to do is mount a power pole connector on this right here. Now to do that, we've got to get the insulation off enough. Uh, there's a couple tricks associated with this. Okay, we're going to use this tool right here to kind of separate these leads. Okay, enough that we can put the power pole connector on it. And that's probably enough right there. If it isn't, we'll see. Now this is 14 gauge wire. I have this marvelous little insulation stripping tool that um, I found and it's just really cool because if you put this in the right slot here where it says uh, 14 there you can see the the 14 in there so I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to strip 
some wire off the end of this, okay? So I just grip it and it comes off just like that's why I really like it. Okay, now we go red to black, so we know that this black one has to have the connector, this little connector, okay, pointed down. So we'll be very careful and and uh, put this over this so there aren't any wires sticking out. Now you'll notice I left just a little bit of space between where the connector ends and where the insulation begins. That's because the way this housing is put together, uh, if you put that insulation all the way in, it won't allow this part to go all the way in. So let's crimp this now. On the crimping tool, we have uh, this right here. Let's see if we can get this so you can see it. Okay, there we go. Uh, I see the 45, the 70, is that 70 there? 75, 30, and 15. So it's not the one above it, it's the hole in the, the middle. So this is for 15 and this is for 30. So we're doing the 30 amperes. So I'm going to pick this up, okay, and I'm going to put this into that 30 amp slot right there, okay, and I'm going to crimp this. Now, um, the makers of the crimpers say to give this a manly squeeze. Now, quite frrankly, I think there are many, many, many women who can give it a manly squeeze. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Okay, and there it is. It's crimped. Now, crimping is an interesting thing because when you crimp, you're putting pressure on the uh, copper underneath. And so a question might be, well, won't the metal kind of migrate with time and and that pressure won't work anymore. Well, in fact, as it turns out with copper, it will maintain that pressure. Okay, it's got enough springiness in it, it'll maintain that. That is a very solid connection. Now what we do is we take the, the black that we've got right here, okay, and this is the end. Get the light just right there. This is the end with the little piece there. So we're gonna turn this around and come in with this push it in, make sure I got it right, yep, push it in until it clicks. Then the key thing to note, see if I can get up here enough that you can actually note that, is that the little lip that is on the connector, see, the little lip comes out over on the top of that connector that is inside right there okay so now let me quickly do the uh, one for the uh, positive so now and remember I left a little bit of uh, cable uh, that didn't have insulation on it now if you note in the cable itself that part is entirely within the housing so it's insulated right up to there so let's try this we'll take about that much off. Okay, we put the little actual tongue on there. Again, there's some space left over. So what we're going to do now is find the 30 one here, and we'll put that around this. Come on, come all the way in. It's actually easier to do this horizontal, but I want to show you how it's done. Put that in the the 30. Let's get it twisted around the right way there. Okay. Let's let's say for sake of equality we're going to give this a womanly squeeze. There we go. Okay. Now an important thing to notice as some people like to put a little solder on these. The thing you have to be very very careful of is that the solder not get on the tip down here and that it not increase in any way the uh, diameter of this crimped part because otherwise it won't push in to the connector. 
So we get our little connector out here, come over here, push that in with the kind of squeeze an old man would do. And there we have the two connectors. They're not together. Now watch this. Pull this one over. Let's get it this way. Pull this one over. This has got the ridge. This has got the receptacle. Okay, there we go. Right, right up to there. Make them even. And you've got your connector. Now there is a way to make that connector hold because obviously we just slid it in. We could just slide it right back out. We don't want to do that, of course. But what we will do is there's a little itty bitty teensy weensy pin that goes in that hole right there that you can tap down in there. Some people put tiny little tie wraps in there and so on. We don't need to bother with that. But what I will show you is that now this mates with that and we've got polarity correct, okay? There's no way to put it on backwards. It just will not go backwards. It only goes forward like that. Now, one thing you have to note is that if you put too much pull like a transceiver and you pull it out, you can actually pull a connector off of this thing. So make sure you've got enough looseness in your cable. If you've got these in extension cord format, you'll note the two holes there. You could just wire them, put a real thin little wire there, string or something, fishing line, hold that together. Okay, so in conclusion, Anderson power pole connectors allow a standard way of connecting power to amateur radio equipment. You're starting to see more and more rigs come out with the power pole connector right on the back rather than a proprietary uh, or a Molex connector. So, pretty cool, neat to know about. Until next time, 73.